All right, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord who's on with us tonight. Okay, you got a background too, sister. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, Lord Jesus. So is everybody going to show around the edges, the pictures? Yes, is they um, popping, they will. Wonderful. Yeah, we don't have to wait for, we can go ahead, they can um, watch the video when we post it. All right, praise the Lord, we're going to, we're going to open prayer meeting this evening with a word of prayer. Uh, Reverend Mar Marissa, you want to do that for us? Your thing. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this day and another opportunity to gather before you and call on your name lord your yes, word lord. says that when two or three saints are gathered that you are in the midst and father we're just praying and expecting now that you'll be in our midst as we are here today to reflect on and um and give caring of your word and, and use it to nourish and strengthen us and give us guidance to illuminate our path father we also are praying for those in the past of storm etta that all be safe and well prepared and that um you provide protection in jesus name we pray amen 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 hallelujah our music will be here in a second Be on the right channel. We also are soldiers in the army. We have 
the fight, although we have to die, we got a hold of the blood stained We got a hold it up until we die. Now my mother was a soldier. She put her hand on the gun. One day she got old, but she couldn't fight anymore. She had to stand there and fight anyhow. Oh, we are so young. In the yard, we gotta fight, we gotta fight. Although we have to die, we gotta hold up Oh, the blood's saying, we got a hold, 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 we got John. It starts with the verse, I am the vine, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he pur purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Uh, we are, we are, uh, Jesus is the vine. We are the branches. He tells us there's nothing we can do without him. Um, I liken our walk to soldiers in the army. And the scripture we're going to use for tonight is the 13th verse, which says, Greater love hath no man than this, that he laid down his life for a friend. Uh, Jesus said, if you love me, I, you, I call you no longer servants. I call you my friends. So for, to help us think about our walk with Jesus, it is uh, helpful to look at the example of a character that uh, is uh, well known in the movies, uh, John Rambo. Anybody ever heard of John Rambo? Yeah, Pastor likes watching Rambo movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll never forget showing my grandkids the Rambo movies. And and uh, my youngest one said, you know what? He disobeyed orders. <laughs> I said, yeah, he did. <laughs> but he was following a different set of orders. So that's what we have. We have a different set of orders in the world. But the uh, Rambo really has a negative connotation because it's shown as macho, tough guy, uh, and the word the Rambo is used really in a negative sense when someone is just overbearing and just barges over other people and uses their, their, their strength or their bully people. And that's really not the case. If you watch the movie and you see in the final scene, the, the, the colonel asked him, so well, what, do you, what do you want? What is it that you want? He said, what we want, what we want as, as veterans, as soldiers, what we want is for our country to love us as much as we love it. And um, so Rambo really is about love. Uh, first of all, he's, he's a soldier in the army. He takes on a commitment. So I want to talk about this love that we have as Christians. And we make it, we make it emotional and we make it uh, relational. But really, it's, it's, it's a life of sacrifice. But it's, com it's completely fulfilling. There is no fulfillment in life without love. Uh, so just like Rambo joined the army, 
to fight for his country, he made a commitment, first of all. So we make a commitment to Christ. We make a commitment to Christ. Uh, it's like joining the military. It's like joining the army. I was in the Marines for four years, traveled around the world, had to follow orders, had to go through some tough stuff. Basic training was, was incredible. But it was necessary in order to become a soldier. We become Christians, we have, we like to focus on the good things that uh, we get. We think about what we get. We think about the blessings. We ask the Lord to save us because we, we find ourselves in situations where there's none else that could save us but Jesus. And, uh, or, or sometimes we were walking the wrong way so bad until uh, the circumstances got so bad, we had to call on Jesus. And then we look for the blessings. Yes, there are many blessings, manifold blessings. We look for the blessings. We forget about the service. The service is essential. You cannot get out of life what you should if you're not serving. Everybody has a purpose. Everybody has a calling. Everybody has a service. And, and mainly we have a commitment to Jesus Christ that we will go and do. The old folks say, I'll go where you want me to go. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll say what you want me to say. Uh, do we do that? Do we do that? Number one is commitment. I had a discussion with someone and we ended up getting into an argument about commitment. Um, we were talking about in marriage and, and one person said, well, you have commitment, but if I run into something I don't like, or uh, then I'm not, I'm not gonna deal with that. And I said, well, that's not commitment, that's conditional. So you have a conditional relationship. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, that's, that's, that's a commitment. But uh, until it gets to the point where I can't agree. So uh, they didn't understand. But there's a difference between when a commitment is a commitment regardless. It's regardless. It's anyhow. Like this song we just sang. We, we have to fight anyhow. We have to stand there anyhow. This is not, this is not easy to do. Because the, the problem with commitment for us is that when things get rough and things get ugly and things get painful and there's hurt and, and 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 it seems like the people that we are we become emotionally involved with uh can hurt us more than anybody else why because we we have made ourselves vulnerable to them we have mm -hmm. a, allowed them into our close inter inner circle so they can hurt us the most, and invariably, that's what happens. That's what happens. And when we get that hurt, we don't want to. We don't want to stand there and deal with that. We, it really, and, and sometimes it's very difficult to heal that. You know, somebody else can call you a name, or somebody else can fall out with you. You don't care. But if the person that you have a close emotional relationship with does that they can even if they even look like they're gonna call you a name it hurts more than anything else uh and so it, it impinges on our commitment we we, we we rethink our commitment we're like uh, i don't know if i signed up for this you know and, and i'm certainly not talking about uh, physical abuse or anything like that but 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 there's enough emotional abuse to really make a committed relationship difficult. So it's gonna be difficult. So that's why we need the third member in that relationship, which is Jesus. We need the love of God. We cannot make it just on human affection. We have to have the love of God to make our relationships meaningful. So that's when the Bible says a threefold, threefold cord is not easily broken. So you have you, your spouse, and God. And if you have that, you can make it. But know that you're going to have difficulty. Uh, um, Rambo joined the army, and they gave him a, a, a orders. 
that were illegal. They told him to leave those POWs over there and come back home. And he, 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 didn't, he didn't obey orders. My grandson said he, he disobeyed orders. Yeah. God tells us to love your enemies. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Someone hits you on the left cheek, turn the other. These are, these are contrary to the world. But we got to be like Rambo. We got to go ahead and do what's right anyhow, regardless. We got to follow. We got, sometimes we, we, can't, we can't follow the world's order. We got to follow God's orders. So commitment, number one. Commitment means no matter what. You gotta have, if you got love, you gotta have commitment. Number two, you have to have engagement. You have to be involved. Uh, this is another thing that can break down relationships. Uh, 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 many, many women frequent, frequently complain that their husbands simply don't involve with them. It just, hello. You know, you're quiet, you don't talk, <laughs> you know. Uh, and, and, and men, men kind of do withdraw because they feel like they may say the wrong thing or the, their spouse may misunderstand what they're saying. And uh, so men kind of withdraw inside. They, men, men, men have feelings, we have feelings and so forth, but we don't, uh, we, don't always feel free to share them because sometimes we share our feelings. We feel like the spouse is like, well, what, why do you think something like that? And then there you go. So we kind of keep it inside. So it's a tough thing to work on. So we have to be considerate of each other. We're, we're learning where I work, the different personality types. So, uh, we don't consider ourselves a sales organization. We consider ourselves a people organization. Uh, our leader says, you're not going to do business with anybody unless they're a friend, unless you have a friend. You're not going to do business with them unless you're doing something that helps them, unless you're doing something. So it helps us understand that we're not, we're not trying to sell something. We're trying to make friends. And, and everybody's not going to be your friend. So <laughs> there's only some people... That, that you can be friends with. You can't be friends with everybody. Some people are, are not uh, open to that. So we have to learn how to speak the language that other people speak. So there's like five different personality types. And these people here, according to their personality type. So what you're saying to them, you think you're saying, they're hearing something else. For instance, if you have a person that's an intellectual and everything is, is rational and thought, and you, you're you speaking to them from a basis that might be more, more emotional, more sensitive, uh, they're not gonna get you. Even though you're sincere and you're speaking, they're not really gonna get you. So it's important to understand who you're talking to. So you do that by learning to listen to people. When Jesus said, follow me and I'll make you fishes of men, what he meant was, I'll teach you how to learn and study men, human behavior, so you know how to witness. Uh, I'll never forget a young man came up to me when I, I just went into ministry. And he came up to me on the street. I was at the commuter train station. He just walked up to me and he started saying, ah, uh, you know, the Lord, the Lord died for you. And do you, you know Jesus? And he was just going, and I kept holding my finger up and saying, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I couldn't get a word in it. He was busy telling me the story. So we were a few blocks from the church. I said, hold up, young man. I said, you see that church down there? I said, I'm on, the, I'm on, on the ministerial staff at that church. I said, if you're going to witness to somebody, you have to find out who they are, what's going on. Your witness is your interaction with that person on the basis of what's going on with them. That's how you bring Christ to people. Don't just walk up and start talking, okay? What you're doing really then, you're really just imposing on a person, you're assuming, you're doing all kinds of things. So just find out who you're talking to and ask God to show you where the need is, okay? <laughs> so that's what we have to do. We have to find out that who, who, who we're talking to, what 
what kind of personality style do they have? And then we have to speak like that. Jesus used parables all the time. He talked to the people based on uh, um, who their their life their life experiences and what they he talked about pastures, talked about sheep. He talked about seed and sowing, and they could readily understand these concepts because these are things that they are involved with in their lives. So commitment means understanding other people, understanding human beings, being willing to deal with things regardless of what happens, okay? The next thing I said was uh, 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 understanding the other, what, what is, uh, besides commitment, the next thing was, uh, well, understanding the other person, understanding people. Uh, you, you'll never get the point across. You'll never reach souls if you don't understand how human beings uh, operate. This was one of my biggest challenges because I, I assumed everybody was like me, which is not correct. <laughs> uh, in fact, very few people, people are like me. So we have to learn learn our uh, to be soldiers we have to learn our I don't want to use the word enemy because people are the enemy the devil is the enemy but we have to learn who what the what the battle situation is we have to learn who who we're fighting and 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 how to free people that are caught up with the devil we have to know uh, the landscape and then uh, love is something that we always want to get, but few want to give. You have to give. Service is the key to the Christian life. It's not about... Uh, the Lord, well, we have we have all the scriptures of blessings. Uh, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Everything's going to work out all right. I'm going to have the victory. God has got my back. All of this. This is what all we focus on. We don't really think about the fact that we have to. We have a a service to do. We have a job to do. We are the light of this world. As I, I hear Pastor talk, uh, uh, we're we're the light of this world. We are the salt of the earth. If it doesn't have our input, it will not be salted. We are what God has here instead of him, instead of Jesus, to carry out the message, the plan. There will be no love if we don't bring it. Love has to come from us. I watched for four years the Christian, black Christians. <laughs> no, I'm not, I, was, I watched our people complain and moan about the man. And it was like from sun up to sundown. It's all they talked about. And I was like, they think more about this man than they do about Jesus. I mean, he's on there. I mean, is that yet? Yet this man, this man, his name, his name continued. And I said, they don't understand that someone has your attention like that and your focus like that you you you're really more into them than you are into god you end up, you're not into yourself of course there's going to be uh difficult leaders of course there's going to be uh, uh difficulty in society we are the ones who have the answer we have the answer we should have been coming forth with all kinds of, I didn't see a whole lot of, this is how we deal with this. This is what we, this is what Lord wants us to do. This, all I saw was complaint, 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 and, and anti, when we learn to be, to pray, we love to pray against somebody. We like, we like to pray and make them, make them the enemy. We're just praying for God to bring them down, break them down. And that's all we talk about. God, God don't work like that. He said, bless your enemies, pray for them that despitefully use you, love your enemies. We don't have any concept of that. 
we have got we've gotten into society we're just like the world we've gotten into a society of if you disagree with me you're my enemy and we treat you like an enemy if you disagree with me and that's where we are i heard the other day the young people use the, the phrase cancel culture i didn't know what it was i said i'm like let's cancel culture so a young man he just gave me uh, he's a young minister. I said, I said, Reverend, Reverend, what is cancel culture? He didn't answer me. He sent me for usually we talk back and forth on Facebook. He sent me a link and it kind of explained the whole thing. It's the idea that people that you dis disagree or they not quite, they start, they say things that don't quite fit what the group likes. They just basically shun the person. A good example of cancel culture is Jehovah Witness. Jehovah Witness, if there, if a, if a fam, if a couple or family or a person uh, does something that's against their, not so much against the Bible, but against their practices, they will actually shun that person. You'll be forbidden to talk to them. Uh, there are people who said that they've had uh, folks who have been shunned, and it's a terrible thing. Uh, that is not. Christianity. That is not what Jesus died to uh, isolate or cancel people. But we've got that really bad now. It is, our nation is divided. We're in camps of groups and different groups. We agree on two things, but we disagree on five. Uh, and so we have a lot of healing and togetherness. And it, sh it should come through the church. I hope I hear now, uh, no more complaint. Now we can forget the complaints about who's in power. Now we need to talk about the love of God healing this country. And I, I like to talk to people who say now we can get back to God. Uh, that's a misnomer because America never really was with God. <laughs> okay. They never really claimed or tried to be with God. They were more interested in building their uh, uh, empire through slavery and other things. So it, this assumption that we used to be with, the America used to be with God is incorrect. We ought to get to God. I'm working on a song now, America, you need to really trust in God. But so Rambo love, goes through the sacrifices he went through went to prison he went through torture he went through all kinds of stuff but the first opportunity he got he fought his way out and uh, set free those prisoners he brought every one of them back and they didn't want him to bring the prisoners back because they didn't want people to know that we had left all those men over there and, and forgot about them so we we have to set free the prisoners. We have to do the the tough work, the dirty work. We have to we have to go where people are hurting. We're going to help them, and we have to be receptive of people who are not like us. We are so clannish. I mean, I love I love my people. I'm an African American from the heart, but we have become so clannish. That we just just as bad as the racism that we, I'm not saying we we are do, are being racist, but our point of view has become uh, ethnocentric to the point where we really are thinking a whole lot about black and not about just American, about everybody, and so. Christianity is not a, a select uh, religion uh, that is uh, closed to certain people and only open to some. Uh, Christianity is really not a religion. It's a way of life. It's a way of living that's inclusive of all people. Whosoever will is so uh, uh, profligate in the Christian uh dogma in the bible uh who whosoever anyone who believes 
anyone, no matter what your background, no matter who you are, no matter you're male, female, black, white, we have to really mean that. I don't know how our time is doing here, uh, but we have to really mean uh, what we say uh, in, in loving God. So he only gave us two commandments, love God and love your neighbor as yourself. And so uh, I will close with this. Rambo love is the love, same love that Jesus had. Loving others uh, more than self. Serving others. And being committed to the cause, regardless of what happens. Trouble comes, and it will come. Just as sure as you're standing here. I don't, I don't care where, <laughs> where, where you are. Trouble will find you. But the old folks used to say, I'm so glad trouble don't last always. Mm -hmm. It will pass over. If you wait on the Lord, be committed simply means wait on the Lord. My biggest struggle, I have found out now at 78 years old, is being able to wait on the Lord. I've had to work on my patience. Patience uh, uh, and, and the Bible says tribulation worketh patience. If you want to, if you're praying to God for more patience, what you probably will get is more tribulation because tribulation works patience. The only way you get and develop patience is by going through troubling things <laughs> and learning how to wait on the Lord and not trying to fix it yourself, not trying to do because you can't. You're the, uh, uh, we are the vine, God is the branches. We can do without him, we can do nothing. So my friends, I say to you tonight, although this is not a favorite uh, aspect of Christianity, it really is the key to love, the love of Jesus, the love relationship, a uh, successful walk with Christ, and that is loving others, esteeming others uh, above yourself. Loving others, giving, giving love. We always want to receive love, just like Christmas is a gimme gimme. I want to receive something. You should think in Christmas, what, what did I give? Who am I going to give to? How am I going to give Jesus to somebody? Hard, but the hardness brings success. You really want to know what love is about. Try serving somebody. Try being committed to somebody. And Jesus will give you the victory. Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> all right, all right. All right. Yeah, like you, so you were talking and you were talking about like loving even the difficult people. Is is be honest, everybody is not easy to love. No. <laughs> Some yeah. people you're like, they mama can love them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't know about nobody. <laughs> okay. Um, but it made me think about I had to go find it. It made me think about Colossians 3 and 13. Um, because it talks about God giving the grace to put up with one another and and bearing with one another. Um, because like we all got our rough edges, we all got our areas that we're we're growing in. Um, and God can give us that ability to figure out how to get along with one another, how to um Go to your brother and sister and apologize and work it out. How to figure out how to come to the middle and make that compromise. How to listen and hear and respect somebody else's opinion, even if you don't agree with it. Um, and know how to still love them, even if you guys agree, just disagree on that subject. Mm -hmm. This is this is a tough this is a tough thing. I'm 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 a tough. <laughs> uh, 
I, I like to find agreement all the time. Sometimes people people don't want to agree with you. They think if they agree with you that you're trying to uh, control, manipulate. But what I've what I found is helpful is to have either in the discussion with, with someone or have a third party. And this is so important, have a third party kind of feedback to each of us what we're saying. Because they can mm -hmm. sit and listen and they can say, okay, this is what I hear over here and this is what I hear, hear over here. And then the, frequently the people will say, well, oh, that wasn't really what I was saying. Oh, that's not really what I meant. But so we get caught up in, uh, we have to learn the other's language. Mm -hmm. If we focus on learning the other's language, really learning, okay, when they say this, uh, okay, uh, it's just like when I used to work with uh, teens, uh, uh, troubled teens from, from the Department of Corrections and so forth in, in youth homes, uh, I would give them uh, a warning once and then twice. Then I would say, all right, okay. And uh, the, the guys that have been there a while said, hey man, you better chill. Cause when you say, okay, what that means is next step, I'm about to deal with some consequences. So I used to say, okay, all right. <laughs> so we have to learn each other's language, pick up the signals. Okay, when you see someone shutting down, okay, you, you're on the wrong. It's not them, it's you. Something you're doing is causing them to shut down. So um, these are the kinds of things we have to pick up on. So we have, we really should study relations because we grew up in a culture in the United States of America, which is the most infantile, babyish culture on the planet, on the planet Earth. Everything is oh, I want this, you know, lollipops, roses, rainbows, everything's going to be nice and nothing should be bad and anybody that's bad, is, I hate them. You know, that's, that's American culture. I mean, it's just, and, and, and everything is now, 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 and everything is me, me, me. We, we've grown up in that culture. We've saturated that. So when you get in a relationship with someone, you can't relate based on that. So we have to study, step back, go on the word. The word of God has a lot of wisdom. Proverbs will give you lots and tons of wisdom but you, you know, proverbs can get uh, uh what's the word uh, it can get over over focus on males <laughs> and really kind of negative on females if you look at but uh but there's some great wisdom there on how to how to get along so it's like we have to work at it it becomes a job i gotta learn this person, I got to figure out what's going on with them. And then my job is not, okay, I got you figured out. Now I'm going to, uh, you know, bring you down. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, okay. Then we got to figure out how to build on that person. But they have to do the same thing. And we have to all, also realize that we have shortcomings and try to work on them. And this is, this is difficult to do. Because, you know, you wake up the next, you know, every day, there they are. <laughs> so it's like, so that's why we have to stay in the word. The word of God will give us wisdom on how to deal with this. We, our biggest enemy is our personal self, not your, whoever you're in a relationship with. Your biggest enemy is yourself. Uh, um, I, I have one study class that I'm in that says nothing can stop you except you. Your only thing that can defeat you is you. Nothing outside of you can has more power or influence over you. All the powers in you. This is what, what Jesus did on Calvary. He, 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 you know, he, he gave all power in heaven and earth in his hand and he gave it to us. He said, Terry, till I send you the promise, the Father. And so it is embedded in us, the church. You have the power. You can change anything, anywhere, just by changing your mind. You got, a, you know, you're committed to Christ. You can use the, 
uh, instead of thinking about getting stuff all the time. You can use uh, the power that Christ has given us to heal things, including yourself. You can heal your dog on self. I'm working on another song. It's called Help Me, Help Me. <laughs> help me, help me. Uh, I have to learn how to work on myself. Uh, and so I, I love the idea of Rambo love because the man absolutely laid his life out there for other people to save the prisoners. We have got to have that kind of commitment. I, we're looking for position. We're looking for uh, growth, uh, movement. We're looking for progress, all these things which are so Western, so American focused. But what really Jesus did, he told the rich young man, he said, sell everything you got, give it to the poor and come follow me. <laughs> the young man was like, uh, I must have came in the wrong meeting. <laughs> uh, no. I'm not finna do that. We, we are not thinking about that. We are trying to hold what little bit we got and add to it. But we don't understand that we really have everything we need. We just need to put it forward in action and God will bless. And I say, I hear pastor preaching this all the time. And I'm not, I'm not, uh, so I'm like, yeah, but I can use a little help. But it's really true, like the lepers, as they went, as they went, leprosy and all, they were healed. Many times we just have to go. And we just uh, have faith in God and just step out and go. God meets us. And that's what God wants to show us, that all I want you to do is trust me. I got this. I got this worked out. But we, uh, we like to, you know, little kids at Christmas, give me this, give me that. And if it's not under the tree, we gonna have a fit. And I'm seeing it, I'm seeing kids absolutely tear up at Christmas time. What's the matter? Uh, Santa Claus didn't bring me, what is it? And uh, <laughs> God knows what you're going through. We, we have a tendency to get mad at God, which he, God, God enjoys that. He likes you to get mad at him because then he can answer you. Call unto me and I will answer. He, yeah, we need to do that. But we get mad at God and we, we, we uh, close, close, close God out. We assume that God hasn't heard our prayer and that God doesn't understand what we're going through. And he's not. And so that's the wrong direction. We should get mad at God and say, like get in and say, okay, if you really then make this make the fleece wet, okay, now make it dry. Okay, if you really God, he said, try me. Mm -hmm. Prove me now and see. Won't I open up the windows of heaven? Try me, check me out. So trying God means walking by faith. Mount Moriah, me coming to Mount Moriah in these uh, in my golden years of life is so much I think about Abraham and, and uh, Isaac. And I think about my, Mount Moriah as the place of faith, not sacrifice, because there was no sacrifice, <laughs> but it's a place of faith, tremendous faith. Abraham had tremendous faith. He told the men, he said, y'all stay here with the donkeys. We'll be back. <laughs> he said, we'll be back, even though he knew God is sending him up there to uh, yeah. do the sacrifice of his son. He told the men to hold your horses. We'll be back. That's true. You know, I mean, and then you also got to think about just the whole notion that the man waited 75 years for the son of, that was promised to him. Yeah. Yeah. But he didn't wait 75 years on this kid. Yeah. God told him to sacrifice him. And he actually he told the men, we'll be back, and went up there. And the kid even asked about, well, what are we sacrificing? And he told the kid, God will provide the sacrifice. <laughs> like, he was walking and speaking prophetically the entire time, which is also kind of funny because 
if you look at Abraham, Abraham had these points in time when he struggled with his faith because there was a couple of times he let other men take his wife because he wasn't believing. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was you know, um, he ended up having Ishmael because he wasn't believing yeah. that God was going to provide him a son through his wife, Sarah. So, like, there were a number of times where Abraham had, as much as he is called and considered um, father of faith, there were a number of times where he had crises of faith as well. Yeah. But in that instance, he, he was speaking prophetically um, God's going to provide a sacrifice. Me and the boy will be back. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> I'm going to preach on that one. Even if he raised them up, we was going to come back. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, I know we're coming back. <laughs> Interesting. That, that, is, that is powerful. God asked us to sacrifice something. We are not likely to think that. It's the last thing we think. We have to go through a series of, of trials and say, oh, well, I guess God wants you. <laughs> I guess that's not what God wants, wants to have. So we have to realize uh, faith in God is the absolute only way to go. And it has so many benefits for not just ourselves, but for everybody. Everybody is blessed when we follow God. Everybody is, is blessed. I really hope our nation starts to look, um, and I have no reason to think they will, but I, I hope they will do better about really thinking about God. I think that we should open the conversation more. And let yeah, let's talk about God in America. And and where where do we really see God? And we have whole denominations that claim that they're Speaking for God, I met, I met a lady in, uh, standing in line in uh, Walmart, and, this, and this, this lady jumped on, you know, our nation, uh, it, uh, uh, oh, she's, oh, she said, I look like this guy that died, uh, Herman something, uh, the black guy who was- Herman a Yeah, she said, I look like Herman Cain. <laughs> Since you know you look like Herman Cain, I, I know the name was familiar. She said, "You don't look for me to talk to you." And she was talking about what a great guy he was, and great he was a great Republican and really loved the Lord. And I said, I just had to say something. I said, "Yeah, but remember, God said we have to love our neighbors as ourselves." The other part of that, <laughs> he loved the Lord, but he didn't even love certain people. The, those folk who don't love. You know, poor folk and even black folk, they don't, they don't, they only love folk like them. So, and so that's the, that's the church, unfortunately, that has been revealed in America, which is uh, like quite, I, I would just say quite damnable, I just think. <laughs> the, the, the misery and suffering that has been caused under that false flag uh, in, in America is, is, I mean, you have millions and millions and millions and millions of lives that have been lost and destroyed and, uh, uh, under that false flag. And these people are so, people are so uh, indoctrinated. I don't say committed, that's the wrong word. But they're so indoctrinated with their beliefs that they, like the Bible said, they will kill you and think they're doing God a favor. Is really where they are. It's just difficult people. Really? So the conversation needs to come up about Christianity in America, church in America. Is, is, is America a Christian? When, when, was, when was America a godly nation? It's never been a godly nation. <laughs> never. America has always exploited um, the scriptures and what the Bible says is a justification for its actions uh -huh. of evil. <laughs> the biggest thing is making money. Do you know that uh, the, uh, the cotton industry, which was uh, black folk picking cotton, slave picking cotton, it made, made America in the 18, early 1800s the, like the fourth 
most powerful uh, economic country in the world just from the uh, just 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 from the south just from the, the work that the blacks did in the south so when you talk about reparations it's really easy to figure that out <laughs> oh, like, yeah. well how do you know oh well uh who made us the fourth uh, largest nation in the world in 1800s okay what did that break down to in terms of money okay so what, <laughs> roughly how many people did you have working okay it's easy to figure that out I mean, there was a, 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 a Catholic Pope that basically gave them the, the blessing because it was, the, it, was, it was their God-given right to come in and invade and, 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 and subdue and enslave Africans in the first place. Hallelujah. And that was their, the justification used to then go out and, and conquer and slave um, and, and, and and have decide. Manifest destiny is called. Yes. That's, good. That's intended from the Almighty for us to go mm -hmm. around the world and tame all the savages and, you know, bring, people. Yeah, bring, them, yeah, bring <laughs> them, yeah, bring them religious and they're savages. So the only way to do, deal with savages is to tame them, like kill half of them. So, you know. <laughs> in the name of, in the name of, I'm not going to say Jesus. They didn't, they didn't really put Jesus' name out there. In the name of the church, let's put it that way. In the name of Christianity or the little city. Yeah. And so the, the idea of not only uh, conquering the, uh, different nations, but the, the concept, which is was heavy in America, that these people are just savages. So bringing them to America is the best thing that happened to them because it gave them civilization and took them out the jungle and everything. That was what <laughs> a racist yeah. people believe. They don't realize that you had a culture, we had a culture, a healthy, vibrant culture that included a healthy, powerful, uh, religious base. We were powerfully African people, powerfully religious. Their belief in God was 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 not only heavy, but it it had God's presence was central to African belief. God's I, I call it proximity. God was not way up there in heaven, like in Western culture. God is way up there. Uh, in, in African culture, God is right there with you. Yep. Yeah. That's what made that's what made us take that. That's what made us interpret Christianity the way we did. We gave Christianity, American Christianity, its its soul. We gave an interpretation. We came over here talking about go down Moses way down and you can tell old Pharaoh, let my people. We came, we came here and and, and uh, 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 we personalized personalized Christianity to the point where we we gave American Christianity its space. It's like we gave America its music. We gave America everything. We gave America its soul. Africans came here and gave this country its soul, its everything. And so uh, we have to realize that America is not a Christian nation. It, the, it, the majority of the people in America, I think it's 60 some percent will say, or maybe it's up to 80 now, will say they're Christians. But only 30% will say they go to church. <laughs> I think when they, when they do this poll periodically, and I think now if they're polling where 80% of the people will say, will say they're Christians. But when you ask them, do they go to church? But only 30% of them say they're active in going to church. And if you ask them if they're saved or something like that, now you're down to like 10% 10, 10 of them you know what you're talking about. Uh, many people will say they're spiritual when, they're, when asked the question, what started happening in the last 20 years is that people would answer the survey and say, well, I don't know if I'm Christian, but I'm very spiritual. Uh, but they 
they mean it's that there's something that they are aware that there's other power, but they don't have a they don't have a sense of what it is, and they don't think it's important to. Them. So America has never been a Christian nation. It is never the the founders did use biblical principles in establishing um, the Constitution, Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights. All of these things had uh, were based on uh, on biblical uh, wisdom, so forth. But it wasn't dedicated to the Bible, and they weren't all. A lot of those, a lot of the signers of the Constitution were absolute humanists. They were uh, Jefferson was a humanist. He was not a Christian. He was a humanist, and his that's why his philosophy was humane. What he said about African Americans was, he said, you know, they're they're highly what do you say highly religious people, very religious people, sound like Donald Trump, but uh, definitely not ever capable of independent, uh, being independent. They have to be uh, ruled by someone else. <laughs> so that's what he thought about African Americans. Uh, he had four or five wives that were African American, but I don't know what he was thinking about that. But so never were a Christian nation, but we have a shot at it. What's happening is, is God is putting America through the crucible to bring it out to be more of a Christian nation. And I think, I think we're gonna see this notion, hopefully the notion of uh, this right-wing Christianity. I think that's, I think that's headed for the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> really do. You, you cannot maintain these tenets of these people. You know, the Jerry Falwells and any other folks, they are like brainwashed. They're like terrorists. Really what they are. They're just, man, they are really against everything that God stands for. So, committed to Christ, you got to be committed to love. Love, sir, and follow. And follow. Follow through. Have faith. Be nice. One guy used to close his, uh, I forget who, I don't know if it was Lester Summerall, one of those guys in the old days, used to close his radio broadcast and say, and give somebody a hug because everybody needs a hug. Everybody needs a hug nowadays. <laughs> just, just hug somebody in the name of Jesus because we all need to. We all need that. One of the things we need a lot in this country is hugs. And we in COVID, ain't no hugging. It's no hugging right now. <laughs> this is the diff most difficult time we've ever been through. Extremely difficult, challenging to everybody. You don't, you don't want to do nothing. Well, you can, and there's so much you can't do. You have to find creative ways to be in touch with God and your fellow man from these limited uh, circumstances. You know, that's why, you know, I, I, I sit here and I'm, I'm a thousand miles away from people I know the most, but I thank God I found Mount, Mount Moriah is, is an absolute blessing. If it, if it wasn't for Mount Moriah, your boy might be in uh, some serious trouble. <laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, God knows what he's doing. These are trying times, but they are. These trials come to make us strong. God is strengthening us for preparing us for something that comes after COVID. You know, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit with this. God gave me three revelations. He, he, he told me Barack Obama was going to be the president of the United States. And uh, people said, well, you're being kind of a little premature, and I'm like, no, no, I, I got, <laughs> I got exercise. I actually projected myself into the, the voting booth. For the first time in my life as an American citizen, I would look down at a ballot and see a name that I could identify with, that I could wholeheartedly vote for. I mean, the, the, the prospect, the prospect was, was something. I'll never forget the day I went out to vote. I couldn't get out the house. Uh, I had started being caretaker with my mom. We had a three-bedroom apartment up in Illinois. 
And uh, I was like, Ma, I can't go down the stairs. She said, well, okay. She said, it's all, it's gonna be all right. I said, I, 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 I said, everybody, I just see everybody's with me. There's all these people, all these people with chains and they're all with me and they're like, go. And I, I'm, I, I see every, every, I mean, I had this just experience about it. That was one of the next thing I said, uh, uh, not I said, but what I felt God say to me was after Barack Obama, what you're going to see, you will not believe. <laughs> That's what I was saying. If you said, wait till, wait till you see what's coming after Barack. I had no idea. I had no idea it was going to be that big. <laughs> <laughs> that's what God said, get ready for something that's coming after. But then the next thing is, where do you see what comes after Trump? Because I think that's a time. And I like what Biden said about healing. It is a time of healing. And I think this is a, I think of Jimmy Carter a little bit right now. Because we came through some, America had come through some stuff with, who was it, Reagan or or, or Nixon, somebody, when Carter came in. Yeah, Reagan came after Carter. Uh, so it was it was a time of healing uh, then. And it, 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 this is another time, but we got a long way to go. We got a long way to go. So God's preparing us for something that we can't handle right now, but he's preparing us. So we should be looking forward with faith and love my God, we got to bring love. We got to bring love back in the world somehow. Because there's too much hate and division. Too many cancel cultures. <laughs> okay. I leave, I leave you in the, in the hands of the Lord. I'm going to close with prayer. Mm -hmm. so, Heavenly Father, our Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, God, our constant friend. Uh, thank you, Lord, for being there. Through all that we have been through, thank you, Lord, for bringing us through. Thank you for, for giving us patience to deal with extremely trying times. And now, God, that it's over, Lord, we ask that you will bring us peace and that you will use us as instruments to bring love in this world. You have given us love, greater love than no man in this. And a man laid down his life for a friend. Jesus died for us. He died not for the good people. Jesus died for us even while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. That's love. That is love. Not that we, he uh, died for those who love him because there really were none but he died for those who did not love him, did not know him, did not care about him, but he died for us. And we thank you, God. And now we are living in a time where we have the opportunity to go forward and show the love that Jesus uh, gave, show the Rambo type love that Jesus exemplified. And so Father, I ask you to bless everyone in the sound of my voice. Uh, bless our pastor where he is. Uh, bless Mount Moriah, which you already have blessed. Help us, Lord, to grow into the ministry and the mission of Mount Moriah. Now, Lord, we ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Until we meet again, keep us in your care. Is my prayer. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.